Coming up on the next episode... Good morning, YouTube. It is 11.17 on this Wednesday morning. We are back with you on the Heath Kit, as you can see there. That's the schematic for the Heath Kit T3 Visual Aural Signal Tracer. Now, this is uh, this belongs to uh, Jack, uh, VEG, and uh, Jack has informed me that uh, in addition to him watching these videos, his uh, lovely wife is going to be watching as well. So uh, I want to wish uh, Mrs. B.E.G. <laughs> a pleasant uh, journey into electronics here. And uh, hopefully she will uh, learn whatever she <laughs> desires to learn from this. And uh, we'll go from there. Um, again... This is just a favor to a uh, J to Jack, who's a friend and a U fellow YouTuber. And uh, like I said, I, I just wanted to help him out if I could. And we're going to do our best to do that. And uh, in order to do that, what we need to do first is examine this um, circuit here and find out what happens, where it happens, and why it happens. How's that? And again, I'm going to reiterate this point. I am no teacher. Uh, I do my best to explain things as well as I can in my head. Uh, my head has all kinds of ideas uh, on what this should be and how it should be said and things like that. But they don't always come out that way. And uh, so that's just that. Uh, before we begin, I want to go over this a little bit. Uh, some of you guys uh, have uh, Heathkit equipment know that Heathkit uh, often sourced uh, parts from uh, surplus dealers and things like that in order to uh, make their kits a little bit more inexpensive to you know get them out there and and have people uh, be able, be able to build them and use these uh, these things. They work fine. There's nothing wrong with the tubes that they use. Uh, you know, it's just not your traditional, probably, uh, tube lineup that you would see in something like this. But, again, it works fine. And uh, so, that's all you need to, to have, really. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's get into the first picture here. Uh, first thing we want to do is, is check out our high gain circuit. Uh, that's another thing I want to go over is the fact that this uses RF input and audio input. That is very misleading. Um, there is a high gain switch, which uh, I will show in just a bit. And um, <laughs> that's even misleading. Uh, we'll see why in just a second. But uh, let's uh, go ahead and delve into the, the high gain circuit and see where it goes and what it does. All right, you can see in front of you now the high gain circuit. Um, and as you look at the switch over there where it says high gain on, now let me show you that over here. Uh, that is, uh, <laughs> you know, most people would say, well, hey, that switch is off. <laughs> it is. And that's how you turn the high gain on. Because if you look at the, uh, uh, if you close the switch, let's check this out. You can see there that the, uh, Basically, if you put a signal into the RF input, it goes to ground. So that effectively, effectively turns off the high gain and turns off that basically there's nothing gets through that tube at all. So that's why it's done that way. So with the switch closed, the high gain is off. With it open, it is on. So let's go back to our circuit again. So now you can see, again, that we have our, our input comes in here. Our gain switch is, uh, is on which is off <laughs> and it comes into the uh, grid of the 12 C8 tube um, that gets amplified and we're not going to go into specifics on tube amplification anything like that the only thing we're going to note here is the fact that you put in a signal here and that signal whoops I don't know how that did it that signal comes out here in the plate and in the process, the signal that's put in is greater than the signal 
uh, well, the signal is put in is less than the signal that comes out. Basically, uh, this will be a, a bigger signal than this was. So that, that means that you know your tube is amplifying and is working. So when we connect our signal tracer, which is what we're going to use in a bit to uh, check this out, we're going to put the uh, probe here and listen to our signal. Then we're going to put it over here on pin 3 and listen to our signal as well. And if we don't hear an incre increase in the volume, we, we know there's a problem with this tube. Pure and simple. Now, I'm not going to get into too much of it, but again, it, it may not be the tube. It may be the voltage going to the tube be incorrect or something like that. So uh, that's just our clue as to where our problem is at. In other words, if we, we don't get our amplification here that we need, we know there's a problem in the circuit. That's what troubleshooting is. So, okay, say the uh, it's everything's okay, the signal travels on over here to this capacitor here, goes through here, and comes up on this line right here. And that's as far as we're going to go for right now. We're going to show you next, again, uh, I want to go over the um, what happens with the uh, high gain when it's turned off. So let me check that out. So again, the uh, high gain is off, and what happens is no signal goes through that tube. And I just wanted to reiterate that before we go on. All right, now our high gain is off, so we're going to be putting our input in over on the audio input. Now, that, again, misleading. It does not have to be uh, audio input. It can be an RF input, but it, it it's demodulated by the probe. So basically, this... Uh, this whole circuit here is basically the same as a guitar amplifier or a PA amplifier, something that, that is a high gain circuit that will amplify something with a very low output. In other words, a guitar, the pickup on a guitar, electric guitar, it does not put out much voltage. Same with a, a microphone, a, a crystal microphone, it does not put out much voltage. And what, uh, so you need this basically this preamp stage to amplify that in order to hear the signal. So the only difference in this one here is we're going to bypass that high gain and, and come into this, this uh, normal gain, I guess is what you would call it, uh, audio. Now if we look at it, you can see the switch is switched over to tracer and it comes right through here, goes down to, now this is where the uh, preamp would come in if it was on, but obviously it's off and it's grounded so that doesn't have any effect on anything over here so our signal comes in through this res resistor here which happens to be a potentiometer uh, anybody that knows anything about poten potentiometers knows that uh, they they take the signal uh, basically away from ground to increase the uh, loudness and towards ground to decrease decrease the uh, loudness of the uh, signal or the strength of the signal I guess uh, so basically, if we turn this volume all the way down, it's grounding the signal just like this switch would over here. So that's what that's how that works. So we're turning, you know, we'll say we'll have this halfway up. It's going to get through, and it goes into our grid here of our 12 SH7, and is amplified again in this inside the tube. Comes out the plate. Again, the uh, signal going in is smaller than the signal coming out. If we don't see that when we use our signal tracer, there's a problem here. And once we know that, we know where to look for our problem. Okay, so next we're going to go over here through this one. And by the way, this is really what you call the first audio amp on this. And it goes through here and comes out through this capacitor. Now, each any of these capacitors in here are always subject to... Um, scrutiny as far as why your signals are not getting through. Now I think Jack on his replaced all of them but so they should not cause any problems. So goes into this is our final uh, output or audio output whatever you want to call it. It's a 12A6. Again signal going in lower than the signal coming out. That's the way this works. So each stage progressively gets that signal up a little bit. And when it finally comes out the top here of the plate, it's put into the um, uh, audio output transformer. As you can see by the squiggly lines here, it is magnetically or inductively coupled to the secondary of the uh, transformer and therefore powers the speaker. 
and we hear sound coming out. <laughs> and you'll notice the switcher, the sw switch for the speaker is set to on because if it was off, we wouldn't hear anything. So we, we've demonstrated, or Jack demonstrated that in his videos very well. And uh, so that's how that works. So now there's one more circuit here that we haven't looked at much, and let's go take a look at it. All right, our final circuit that we want to take a look at here is our iTube circuit. And here's our clue uh, as to where the problem might be. Um, if you look at our circuit here, and we remember from our audio circuit that the, uh, the signal comes out here and comes over through this capacitor and is coupled to the uh, grid of the output tube here and then amplified. Now our, our signal for the iTube is taken off at this point goes up through here, comes through the switch, it's a double double pole, uh, triple throw switch, and comes up here and deflects, causes deflection on the eye tube by going to the uh, grid. And that's what makes the eye go open and closed and things like that. You'll see it moving around and, and stuff like that and uh, we'll see it work. Now, what I'm, what I'm getting at here is we didn't have any uh, eye tube deflection or ejected when he tested it. So that gives us a good or clue as to is there signal here or not. And the answer to that is probably not because there is no deflection on this tube. Now unless, unless by some quirk of fate the uh, tube is not working right or the circuit here is wrong and, <laughs> and the audio is bad, I mean that would be kind of a f strange thing to have both of them go bad, but you know it's possible. But uh, again, this is how it, it, it should be laid out, and this is how it goes. And uh, so when we have a signal here, this again causes this to deflect on the uh, grid of the eye tube and causes the eye tube to move in and out with its little green, green thing. That's why I made this in green, by the way. Uh, but So that's how that works. So now let's take a look at our final whole circuit here and see how everything works together. All right, here we go. We're, we're taking our, our full path in here and we're going to use high gain and we're going to make sure we're going to see how this goes in and, and should come out. Uh, we put our, our input here and we are going to be, be doing this on the uh, bench and we're going to put a, a, a signal in here and we're going to measure that signal with the uh, BDST signal tracer and we're going to see what what volume level it's at here. We're going to measure it here and see what volume level it is. Hopefully it will be bigger or stronger or whatever you want to call it. And that goes over here, couples into our audio. Now our audio input down here is not being used because we're using high gain. So there's no signal coming here obviously. So that couples, couples into this line here which again goes through the potentiometer. This is our gain control right here. Uh, higher it's set, the higher it is above ground. So uh, that couples into our grid here of the 12SH7, gets amplified, comes out the plate, and goes over to the next coupling capacitor, which is here. And as soon as it takes off there, it feeds the I tube, which again should deflect with signal. And again, that is amplified by the audio output right here and comes up through the plate and again goes through the uh, audio output transformer through the uh, uh, magnetically coupled to the secondary and goes out through the speaker. Now I don't show a path to ground but each one of these have a path to ground so that's, that's how they get their signal path. Uh, but like I said that's what we should have and we have that cert, uh, according to what I've watched on Jack's channel uh, we have a little bit of, of audio coming out of there, but it's just not enough to cause even the, the eye tube to deflect. So there is a problem somewhere there. But, you know, according to what Jack thought he saw on this uh, last video that he made, he thought maybe the problem was here in this audio output transformer. But this being no signal here to make the eye tube deflect, kind of shows you that that's not the problem area. The problem area is in this tube right here, in this area here. More than likely in this area right here. In other words, we're not getting the full signal through this and uh, getting it over here. So that's what we're going to be thinking we're looking for. 
So when we get onto the bench, we will be doing that. We will, like I say, we'll take our signal tracer here, check the signal, check for signal here, should be amplified. Check for signal here through our capacitor, make sure our capacitor works right. Our, our gain or volume control will be about halfway up. And that's another important thing. When you're doing testing like this, it's important to leave your controls the same throughout your test. In other words, don't be varying your volumes up and down because you can't tell the difference then in the signal. So uh, leave your uh, volume wherever you want to set it at and set it there. You want to set it fairly uh, low enough to where it's not going to hurt your ears if it comes out real loud. So uh, check signal here and again check signal through the tube. Make sure there's amplification. Uh, same thing with this coupling cap here. Make sure that gets through that and uh, again amplification here between the uh, grid and the plate and that's pretty much it. Now off uh, off camera I did test this uh, audio output transformer and the speaker and uh, they seem to be both working f just fine and uh, I, I fed a signal into the uh, speaker and then I fed it into the audio output transformer and is actually coming out of the uh, uh, audio or through the audio transformer it's louder than it is just going into the speaker so uh, that's uh, it should be all right uh, I wouldn't think that's any problem so again I think our area our area of concentration is going to be in this area here uh, just from what I see on the uh, no deflection on the eye tube and no real audio output so again that can be caused by a lot of different things this tube uh, probably is good but it may not be getting the right voltages it may not be getting the correct input from the uh, potentiometer there's a lot of different things that could happen here to cause a problem and we were going we're going to be examining that and uh, that's what we'll be doing so join me when we get onto the bench and uh, we'll take a look at all this and see what we find good tuesday afternoon to you all youtube i'm here on at the bench uh, it is 3.25 in the p.m. Um, I was <laughs> in the process of setting up for the uh, troubleshooting uh, to start. I have all my little, uh, I had all my little cables run and, and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I had just a, a slight problem getting the signal, signal coupled. I had my uh, plus side of the signal connected there and I had my minus connected there and depending on how I move this I could hear a signal come through the speaker but if I just let go of it nothing came through so what I got to looking at and I was moving this around and notice this that is not even soldered I don't know how well you can see that there is no solder at all on that now I'm, I'm going to double check, make sure it's supposed to be soldered, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be soldered. Uh, because, uh, well, I don't know why, but I think that goes up to the uh, switch for the RF uh, high gain. And if you look at that one, I don't think that one's soldered either. No, it's not. <laughs> so... Uh, right away we found two uh, switches that are or two places that are not soldered so uh, <laughs> before I can continue obviously those have to be soldered what this does is takes this to ground and if you run this around here uh, you'll notice it goes right up to ground here on this let me see if I can back up a little bit that goes right up to here to ground on the chassis for the speaker here and that grounds that off. That's that ground or high gain switch that I told you about in the previous section uh, that basically, you know, takes or turns our, what do you call it, off. Now, uh, again, that, uh, like I said, this is our grid cap. And uh, we have, uh, that needs to connect over here, it looks like, to this 2.2 mega ohm resistor. And if you look at that on the circuit, it connects there and also connects to your input. So if that's not connected, we're not getting any signal to the first tube. Uh, now I don't know, because Jack had this working uh, somewhat, I'm assuming that this was done maybe in shipment. I don't know. 
it could have been done but like I say whatever the case is I'm gonna solder that I'm gonna solder that get all this straightened out before I continue in other words we're <laughs> all we can do is is go one step at a time here to get our our test set up and uh, so I just wanted to bring you along for that and we'll bring bring you back when the next uh, little bit happens all right we are back once more I am going to show you now I think I have the uh, Everything's set up now. It's right. It's feeding uh, a signal into the uh, uh, tracer here. That's basically down as far as I can get it, as far as amplitude on the uh, frequency uh, generator. And uh, this is our obviously our. Let me get this out of the way here, so we can get around. This is going to be our top signal for the grid. This will be pin, well there's no pin, it's this top cap on the schematic if you look at it. So there's what it sounds like. Now we're going to go to pin 3 next and see what that sounds like. I don't know how well you can hear that, but that is like exaggerated I don't know how many times. This tube is working properly. This is what I was talking about. You can hear the difference very easily uh, in the difference in the uh, on the, uh, the signal tracer. Now, signal tracer is <laughs> is also down all the way, so that just gives you an idea. Well, I got it down. I got it way down now. So there you can hear it now on the grid cap, and this is on the uh, pin 3, the output of the plate. Very much amplified. Very much. So that's going to be uh, our first tube, uh, and we've got it through that. And the next thing we're going to do is go over to pin 4 of the 12SH7 and see what we have there. So hang on. Alright, well now what we've got going on now is the um, next tube is the 12 SH7 and pin 4 is the input or the grid and it's over here and that ain't it I had it here second two three four maybe it's this one here there it is That's a pretty good strong signal. It's not uh, not great. I mean, it, it's probably about the same as it was. Maybe a little less than the other one. Having a little hard time getting on that. Uh... Alright, it's on there now. But it, it's strong enough. So next we're going to go to uh, pin 8, which is the plate. This should be greatly amplified as well. And I'm going to find out which one that is. I think it's this one here. Maybe not. Let me see if I can find it. Yep, it is right there. Okay, so that is nowhere near as loud as the other one. There is your loss of signal right there between the grid and the plate of, pen, of the 12SH7. There's actually a signal loss. Let me, again, let me go again with the, uh, the uh, grid. There's the grid. There's the plate. Less volume. Not the way it's supposed to be. So there you go. That's uh, <laughs> there's your conclusive uh, proof of what where you're losing your signal at. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is shut down and start checking components around this area, find out if there's something wrong. Well, I'm suspecting there is. I don't know what, but you know, again, that's just the way it's going to be. I think so. All right, we'll be back. 
Uh, welcome back to YouTube here at uh, 620 now on this uh, Wednesday evening after 6 that's evening right uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I said this I think I did I, I can't remember I'm gonna I'm gonna go recap what I've done so far uh, basically I, I measured the signal uh, at the uh, input of the uh, first tube that was the grid cap on top and got of course I got a good signal from that and then I got a uh, measured the plate uh, uh, connection and I had bukus of signal there I mean it was booming it was about to blow the speaker out of the BDST and I've got it down all the way so it was plenty of gain in that first se first section there uh, so then I went to the next tube which is this one right here measured the uh, input at the uh, grid which is pin 4 and that is, I believe, right here. Uh, I can't. No, I can't see. There it is, right there. Um, I'm having trouble seeing. Uh, and it, it, the signal was there. It wasn't as good as it was on the uh, other tube, the plate. But you know, you expect it to be down a little bit from because it's going through the gain control and it's it's got a resistor in there, so that's dragging it down a little bit. So then I went over to the plate, which is pin eight and measured it and the gain had just completely gone away so uh, basically there was nothing there and uh, so I got this looking around here and this is the mod uh, Mr. Carlson's mod I don't know if uh, anybody if you guys they've got one of these have heard about that but uh, there is a mod, mod to make and Jack went ahead and made that <laughs> he did all right the the resistor is proper size it's a 5 meg resistor um, and he's got a capacitor in there bef between uh, it goes between pin 4 and the uh, wiper of the gain control and that was in there but the problem was uh, there was no connection between this point here and this point here in other words I don't know if it was a cold solder joint or what but there was basically no connection there there was some plastic on this I, don't, I couldn't tell if the plastic maybe had gotten melted in there and kept it from making a good connection or what uh, I don't know, but anyway, I have removed the plastic and resoldered the connection. Now I have I have measured the continuity between here and the wiper up on top there. I don't know if you can see that. Up here is the wiper for the gain control, and that comes down through here and connects right there. Or, I'm sorry, right here, and um, that's where it goes. And now, I've, I, like I said, I've measured from this lead here. Up to here, I do have uh, good continuity there, so that should uh, lend itself to make a little difference, if nothing else. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a retest of this and uh, see how it works, and stay tuned for that. All right, we're back on another retest of this after the solder job. I thought maybe this might make a difference, but I don't think it has. Uh, as you can see, the uh, gain control is still halfway up. I have. <laughs> I have tried unsuccessfully turn the speaker off. Speaker is not not responding to the switch, so apparently there's a problem with it. I did resolder connection up there, but I thought that was on the high gain. The high gain works. That, that cuts the signal off, so I don't know. Let me show you what it does here on the uh, signal tracer. Uh, this is the input here to pin four. That's the input to the uh, grid of that tube. And the next one you'll hear is the output. It's not near as loud. Not near. I mean, you can go from here. Nice clear signal. And you go back to here. i got to get this a little closer. Can't reach my probe there. Let me play it or do the difference again. I think even on the camera you can hear the difference. So that's uh, a good sign right there. The uh, tube is not amplifying. Now we're going to find the reason out for that, and uh, that should 
should should work because I'm I'm measuring at the grid of the tube. It's not the it has nothing to do with the uh, modification here because I'm getting good signal at the grid of the tube. The grid the tube is just not amplifying. Now I noticed here there's a few uh, uh, resistors that looks like uh, j or Jack has replaced because they're new, and of course the uh, caps he did replace. So I'm going to go over and check all this real quick and find out what's what, and then we'll bring you back. All right, well, we went, uh, I should say we, <laughs> there's nobody, there's no mouse in my pocket. Uh, <laughs> I say we because Bob and I have been chatting back and forth on the text and I've uh, been sending pictures and things like that. And uh, this uh, resistor here on the uh, pin 8 is a 390 ohm resistor. You can see it's uh, orange, uh, white, brown. And it's difficult to see, and I'm going to blame this one on maybe Jack's poor eyesight. Uh, you know, you can't can't fault him for that. But uh, that is supposed to be 390k in there. So uh, measure the voltage on this. It measures 208 volts um, across the pin eight, and it's only supposed to be 90. So obviously uh, that 390 is not dropping much voltage there. So uh, I'm going to change that out and we'll see what that does. Stay tuned. Alright, the uh, resistor has been changed out with a 390k ohm uh, resistor. And that is resulting in a little bit of a difference now. I've got it still hooked up to the thing and I'm, that volume is down, or gain I should say, is down all the way. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. That was not even a quarter of the way. <laughs> this thing's working fine now. Uh, so, Jack, your volume issue has been, uh, 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 you know, fixed. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, let me show you the iTube, too, while we're at it here. Uh, I think you can pick up on it. Let me get this down a little bit. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. Watch the iTube now. So there you go. It is working. Working very well, as a matter of fact. This thing has a tremendous amount of gain. And uh, I think uh, what we're going to do... Now, I still have a problem with the speaker. I'm going to have to address that. It, the speaker doesn't shut off anymore. As you can see speaker switch has nothing, no effect on it at all. So we're going to fix that. So that's, uh, that's your gain problem all fixed up there, Jack. And uh, I think that's good. And uh, what we're going to do now is I'm gonna check the wiring on this. And I will bring you back to show you what's the problem with that. Stay tuned. Right, I'm back once more. I did uh, replace this um, 47. It's supposed to be a 47. That's supposed to be yellow, uh, purple, brown, I think. Uh, and it's actually measuring 68 meg, or not 68 meg, 68 ohms. So I took that out and uh, put in a, a fresh 47 ohm resistor into the circuit where the uh, speaker connects to. That goes in that circuit. Now the speaker uh, connection is working. Works fine. So high gain works fine. Uh, this is hooked up now to the audio. It's not hooked up to the high gain. That's why the gain is not so great. It's still pretty good though. It will move the uh, the eye eye tube. You have to turn it up a little bit more, but it does move it. So anyway, that's that's how that works, and uh, it's doing great. So uh, I think that's going to do this part of it. And uh, what I'm going to do next probably is test the tubes. By, uh, Bob, why do I keep calling Jack Bob? Uh, <laughs> Jack wanted me to test the tubes in my tube tester, and I probably will do that. Uh, I can tell you right now, though, Jack, uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with these tubes. They work fine. And uh, so, anywho, that's that. Uh, one thing, I did get to use the... Uh, uh, MFP quite a bit, the uh, uh, old function generator, that was uh, what I'm using for this. Switch it off and switch it on. So you can see that comes in handy for that. I also use the BDST for tracing the uh, uh, signal through the uh, circuit. 
and that worked fine. Uh, the uh, meter, I plan on using that on the uh, PLG radio. We're going to try and, and align that and see how sensitive that is, if it is sensitive enough. If it is, we will use that to align the radio. And that's, that's also coming up. The uh, radio that I was telling you about the other day did arrive uh, via U UPS today, and so I haven't even opened the box yet, but it is here. And uh, let the buyer beware on this. Uh, <laughs> this new cable that I bought. Uh, let you go see this real quick. Came apart. I'm not sure how to get that back together, uh, if there is a way. I, I don't know if it has to go in this way, and it looks to me like maybe it does. But uh, anyway, that's not good. <laughs> so I've got to figure out how to fix that or put a new end on it or something. So that's coming up. Also, uh, now this, uh, this, last, this is going to be the last video on this part of the uh, signal tracer, but I do plan on another doing another video on it. Uh, where we put the uh, end on the probe and test his probe out, maybe even get a, a radio to check out with it and go from there. And also I may test the tubes. I don't know if I'll do that online or not or on the, on camera. Uh, I may just go ahead and just give him the results of the test and then we'll see. But uh, anyway, whatever we do, we're going to do. <laughs> Does that make sense? So uh, you guys uh, have a good one. Thank you so, so much for watching, and we will see ya!